Hi, I'm Rene Capsule. I'm located outside the renal cortex, which is the outer layer of the kidney. I am a tough fibrous layer that surrounds each kidney. I am a protective covering made up of connective tissue, which is the primary function is to provide structural support to the kidney and help to maintain kidney shape. I am also protect the kidney from external damage and acts as barrier that helps prevent infections or the spread of infections to the kidney. You also need to know that the strong layer of connective tissue is of importance for preserving the renal interstitial hydrostatic pressure RHIP which is necessary for pressure natriuresis. Hello, my name is Renal Cortex. I'm a vital part of the kidney, responsible for various functions related to blood filtration and urine formation. There are many different tissues working together in me to maintain the body internal environment, such as glomeruli, renal tubules, interstitial tissue, blood vessels, collecting ducts, nephrons, and podocytes. Not only that, numerous other cell types such as cuboidal epithelial cell which make renal tubules, smooth muscle cell which form blood vessels and fibroblasts which produce interstitial tissues also contribute to the general functioning of tissue and organism. meat. Hi, I'm Rena Medulla. I'm the inner part of the kidney. I um, consists of a series of renal pyramids. In between the pyramid, there are space called renal columns through which the blood vessel pass. I um, consists the structure of medullary collecting duct, straight tubular segment of nephrons, loops of Henle, fossa recta, and the interstitium. The unique arrangement of these components in my body are essential for the regulation of urine concentration and electrolyte balance. If I'm not functioning properly, it can cause dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, and problem with urine concentration. Hi, I'm Metacalyx. Metacalyx is a structure in the kidney that collects urine from several renal papillae. Its main function is to channel urine from the renal papillae into the renal pelvis. Metacalyx consists of transitional epithelium and supported by connective tissue which provides structural integrity. Hello, I'm a renal artery. I am a large blood vessel that carry blood from heart to kidneys. I have two parts, left and right. My right side supplies blood to right kidney while my left side sends blood to left kidney. My body has four branches which are renal vein, tubules, glomeruli and nephrons. My right side is longer than left one. My left side is more horizontal. Every minute, I carry half cup of blood from renal arteries passed through kidneys. Kidneys cannot function if I am not working. This is because oxygenated blood cannot pass into kidney. The, the renal vein is mainly composed of venous vascular tissue. Its main function is to collect blood from the kidneys to the blood vessel and the duct system and return it to the ducts for further circulation. is a small tube about 25 cm long that carries urine from the renal pelvis to the urinary bladder. It descends from the renal pelvis along the posterior abdominal wall which is behind the perishal peritoneum and enters the urinary bladders on the posterior inferior surface. The wall of the ureter is consists of two layers. The outer layer is the fibrous cord, which is supporting layer of fibrous connective tissue. The middle layer is the muscular cord, consists of the inner circular and outer longitudinal smooth muscle. The main function of these layers is peristalsis, to propel the urine. The inner layer, the mucosa, is transitional epithelium that is continuous with the lining of the renal pelvis and the urinary bladder. This layer secretes mucus, which coats and protects the surface of the cells. Sir, can you hear me? If you do, please move your eyeballs. Sir? Zero, what brand is that? It's, um, we got this wrong man. Oh, what code?
But Strong. Do you know I already submit my work But that stupid guy Doesn't satisfy with my work Hey Jay, why do you look so pale? Are you sick? I'm not feeling well because I feel so dizzy. Aw, pity you. Oh wait! I think I can help you. You should try this supplement. What is pill, Yara? I read somewhere in the internet that this pill is very good, you know, to boost your energy. Hmm, this looks interesting. Right, you should try and take a few and see whether it's good for your health. Okay, I will try it <coughs> Mr. Jeremy? with my work and I think when I'm smoking I can release my tension. Oh actually that's not a good way to release your stress. Eh? Um did you take any alcohol? Yes. So you are also a drinker? Yes. Okay okay. Uh, uh, did you go to toilet often? Uh yes. I always go to toilet and I always pee openly. So that's what happened recently on you? Yes. So I think um, this might be uh, some sign, a warning sign of two problems, either heart problems or kidney problems. But we will see. I think you need to um, cut down your smoking habit and also stop taking alcohol at this moment to know um, your progress after this. And you have to come and meet me for a follow up and we'll check on your health if there is any um, improvement so for now you have to get more rest because you look so restless and we will schedule another appointment with you in one or two weeks time okay, okay, sir? okay thank, thank you, you. Gee, how was last night it was fine Jay, are you okay I'm not feeling well, but I have to go now because I have a, another meeting. Okay. Bye.
you hear me? If you do, please move your eyeballs. Sir? Peter, is he okay? What happened to him? I have reviewed his recent test result and I wanted to discuss some findings with you. Shall we? I'm so sorry. But it appears that there are indications of kidney disease on Mr. Jeremy. Kidney disease? What does that mean, Doctor? Okay. <clears throat> kidney disease is a condition where the kidneys are not functioning optimally. In Jeremy's case, the test show elevated levels of creatinine and protein in his urine, which are signs of potential kidney dysfunction. Mr. Jeremy, you can come in. Hi, Mr. Jeremy. How are you today? I'm good. Okay. For your information, you need to undergo the hemodialysis. How many times I need to go to the hemodialysis process? Okay. Uh, for your case, you had to undergo hemodialysis process for three times a week. So, hemodialysis is the most common type of dialysis and the one most uh, people are aware of. So, hemodialysis is a procedure where a dialysis machine and the special filter that are used to clean your blood. So, here, to get your blood into the dialyzer, so the nurse need to make and assess into your blood vessels. Uh, how about the procedure, nurse? So during the procedure, a tube is attached to a needle in your arm. Then the blood pass uh, along the tube and into an external machine that filters your blood before it pass back into the arm along another tube. So this season may take for four hours. Persistent. Yes. Um, okay, sir and miss, um, after a few days of monitoring him, I think there is some complication but we have to talk personally in my room, so please come to my room uh, later, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Hi, Okay, hi, miss. So, regarding the um, problem that uh, Mr. Jeremy had, so actually after monitoring him and doing some screening on him actually his kidneys are nearing to a complete failure so the only way to for him to recover is to get a donor for new kidney uh, okay so at our medical center we provide an independent donor advocate ida for all potential kidney donors so we promote um, the best interest and right for potential donor and we have many assists in getting and understanding information. So um, we will try to find the best donor which who has a compatible um, kidney and which avail who is available. So we will reach you when we get uh, the suitable donor. So what do you think about this? Because this is the only way or else he has to uh, undergo more treatment but will affect his health more and will make him worse. Mm. <clears throat> if I'm willing to donor, what I need to do? Um, if we will need to do a cross match test 14 days before the planned surgery and then you need to, there will be another procedure like you have to uh, fasting during midnight and the night before the surgery. Um, there will be also, you have to meet our nephrologist and urologist to make sure that both of, both of you are compatible um, to proceed with the surgery. So, and we will have another procedure after the surgery and also on the day of the surgery. So after the surgery, um, normally the donor will have more, um, you know, like um, 
become more sick compared to the placebo. So, but if you take care of yourself after the surgery, within uh, like in a period of time, we will inform you later on. You will get to live normally like other person, but um, there will be medicine to reduce the pain. And once your pain is under control, your walking and your life will be easier and back to normal. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you. against you You never thought You'd be much good for anyone Cause baby